O God, to create us to be co-creators with you. Grant us the wisdom and courage to be part of making the world better, rather than just complaining about the state of the world. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see uh, all of you here this morning. What a beautiful morning the Lord has uh, given us today. Uh, here in this uh, early part of March. I thought March is supposed to come in like a lion. Hopefully it won't turn around and go out. Hopefully it will go out like a lion. Like it has been. But the God has blessed us with a beautiful day. And uh, today we are having a gathering out of the center of the bowling lanes. Uh, we're going to be there from 2 to 4. You're welcome to come out. Free bowling. Uh, pizza. Uh, what do we got? Like 10 lanes, Cheryl? Uh, eight. eight lanes. Okay. So we're, we're going to see uh, who can bowl. What time for pizza? 11 boxes of pizza. 11 boxes all. Okay. 11 boxes of pizza. So that's plenty of pizza. We're going to have a good time out there today. We've got several other uh, uh, announcements uh, this morning. Uh, Bible study will be at 6 o'clock on Wednesday downstairs in the fellowship hall. Our welcome. We've got about two studies left in our winter study. Monday, Thursday, it will be coming up, and uh, eventually we are going to put a ESO out in Narthex with a sign up. We're going to have a covered dish dinner on a Monday, Thursday evening, so that will be a, a good time of fellowship. Order forms for Easter flowers are also in the Narthex, if you would like to order an Easter flower in memory of someone. Uh, that will be out in the Narthex. You can see on your insert that uh, Friendly Circle is collecting greeting card fronts, so if you read that announcement, you can collect some uh, greeting card fronts for them and the ministry that uh, they are doing with those cards. Are there any other uh, announcements this morning? Any other announcements? Cheryl? Um, uh, next week, um, we're having a So you want to meet <laughs> next week and, and talk uh, about Easter egg hunt that's coming up. Very good. So that'll be next week after the service. That'll be good. Also, our property committee has a proposal work day. I just found this night here. March 18th, we've got lots of stuff we need to fix. And uh, if you can help out on that this Saturday, the time will be announced a little bit later. Anything else? Yes. All right. I'll mark that down. 9 a.m. for the work day on that Saturday, March 18th. Thank you, Matt. I talked to Jim this morning at fellowship meeting as at 6 p.m. tomorrow. So anybody on the fellowship committee that they're planning a big Easter breakfast for us, that's coming up. Uh, so uh, I'm glad you said that because I forgot to say that. Thank you, ladies. Tomorrow at 6, fellowship committee. Anything else? A lot going on. All right. We are ready for a one great hour sharing. All this will be going to do that for us this morning.
This partner organization receives funding through the Presbyterian Committee on the Self-Development of People, or SDOP, which is supported by Presbyterian's generous gifts to one great hour of sharing. SDOP enters into partnerships with low-income communities, helping them change the structures around them that perpetrate poverty, oppression, and injustice. One Great Hour Sharing helps neighbors in need around the world and gives us a tangible way to share God's love, not only through the ministries of SDOP, but also the Presbyterian Hunger Program and Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. This project is designed to foster knowledge of urban production and boost the capacity of the community to overcome crises. Also includes starting an experimental nursery to produce seedlings and installing a community farm stand. Its goal is not to only feed the growers' families, but to sell surplus food to cover the basic needs of workers. As women everywhere struggle to put food on their family tables, Paola and the many women whose lives are being transformed by this project are grateful that the people across the PC USA continue to think about them. Please consider making a donation to our minute permission. Let us pray. Walk with us, O oh God, as we serve you and partner with those in need. May our gifts and our prayers support those who work to bring life and hope in their communities. Amen.
keep collecting that money. I know uh, my grandkids have come to me and said, give me some money. Happy to have you my fish. I said, okay. So there's always change laying around the house. Great song this morning. Shine, Jesus, sunshine. There are three verses to it, so if you don't know it, by the time we get to the third verse, you'll probably know it too fairly well.
When my, when my uh, children were your age, you know what we would do every night? I would, I would bring them a book, we would get some books, and every night before they went to bed, I'd read my kids a story. And I always thought, man, that made my kids smart. When you read books, you get smarter. That's, that's the truth. When you read books, you get smarter. Before long, they were reading me the books. And guess what? Now all my kids are smarter than me. Believe <laughs> that. One day you might be smarter than your parents and if, if you read the book. Yeah. Your mom is going to read the book.
but we spend most of our time complaining about the way things are without offering any ideas for any help. We want to judge the way things are, and we don't want to take responsibility for making it better. Forgive us and send the power of your creative spirit to fill us and empower us to live into the image you created for us. Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's stand and sing. Glory of that. Randy and Peggy and their health problems. We 
think of a Sue and Bill battling Parkinson's. Watch over a Bill Bolden. Our friend Doris, continue to be with her. Uh, Patrick's dad, Mr. McCormick, we pray, Lord, for your healing touch upon his life. We ask, Lord, that you would guide Taylor. This is calling as a pastor. Guide his steps. Think of uh, Jack and Dorothy, Celeste and Bill, our friend Jane facing uh, various health problems, and Bruce, Amy and uh, my brother-in-law Jim, continue to heal him. Uh, we lift up Ron and Shana to you, Bill and Patty Bennett. Be with them, Lord. Watch over Daisy, Jim, young Hazel, we lift up to you. Be with Ron and Audrey and, and Michael. Be with Harrison after his surgery. Be with Lisa. We think of Ron and uh, Sue for hip problem. Be with uh, Adam and his family. We think of Jason, Terry Lee after this lung transplant. Be with Gunner and uh, Linda, both having seizures. Watch over them. Unspoken request, Lord, we lift up to you. Patrick and Cheryl, Debbie and, and Jane, we lift up these requests to you. Pray that you would be with them. So Lord, we thank you that you, you hear our prayers and that, that you are with each and every one of these people. Bless their lives and guide their lives. Now we ask that you would be with this uh, world that we're living in. Uh, this world can be very dangerous and, and dark at times. But uh, you give us strength to get through this world, to get through these valleys that we walk through. And not only that, you shine a light through our lives, a, a light of, of, of help and encouragement and comfort through our lives. So help us to, to be those lanterns of your light in this dark world. Be with our military people around the world. Watch over them. They, they've committed themselves to, to defending our freedoms. So be with them and their families. And be with those around the world who are spreading the good, good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch over them and guide their lives. Now we're going to sing together uh, the prayer that the Son of God taught us, our Father and Lord in heaven.
are so good to us. You, you've given us everything. You, you've supplied all of our needs, more than we need. So we give you praise, and we thank you for the opportunity to, to give back our time, our talents, our abilities, our material things uh, to your work here in this community. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless what was given and continue to pour forth your blessing in the lives of these people who give and, and support this ministry. Overflow their lives and, and, and use them to make a difference in this world. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Man, it is that title appropriate, that dark and bloody river. 
You would be amazed at, at the violence and the bloodshed that occurred along this Ohio River from the many uh, 1700s to the early 1800s. Of course, that was the time of the American Revolution, and there were battles between the settlers who were moving west into Ohio and the Native Americans, and the British who sided with the Native Americans, and, and the forces on our side. Oh, man. As I read that book, uh, page after page, uh, reading all of those stories, all of those incidents, all of those things that happened up and down uh, this river valley, I was, I was amazed. I was shocked, actually. But finally, I made it through all 900 pages. I felt like I had accomplished something. I finished that book. Now, I, I could not tell you all of the characters and all of the incidents and, and all of the battles that, that took place within that book, but somehow I got through it. All those things were kind of jumbled up in, in my mind. And when I think about that, it's kind of like trying to read the Bible. The Bible is a very long book. I don't know if you've ever tried to read all the way through the Bible or not. But listen, the Bible has 66 books, 40 authors. It was written over a 1,500-year period, and it has 2,000 or more pages. So if, if you try to read the, the Bible from Genesis all the way to the last page of Revelation, man, that is taking on a big challenge. And, and as you read through that Bible, there are so many stories and so many characters. And there, there is this timeline in, in Scripture that you, you follow as you go through. Man, you go from Genesis to Revelation, you get to the end of reading the Bible, your mind is jumbled. Your, your mind is foggy, thinking, wow, how did we keep all of, all of that straight? I've, I've read through the Bible, but still everything is kind of foggy to me. It's, it's hard to keep the timeline of, of the Bible straight. But if we are patient, as time goes by, we read more, we study more, we learn more, things begin to grow more and more clear. And... and what I have discovered, and what many people have discovered, is that there is a central theme throughout all the pages of Scripture. And the central theme it is this. God's plan to offer grace, to offer forgiveness, to offer a new start, to, to offer life to humankind, to all of us. That's the basic theme. From page 1 to the end of Revelation, God wants to offer us life forgiveness, and, and a new start. And so when I think, after all these years of preaching and, and reading, and when I think of how to summarize the Bible that would help all of us as we try to understand it better, I, I can narrow it down and put it down to these six things. And I want to talk about these six things. Early in the scripture, we learn about the fall of man. We're all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all go in the wrong direction. We learn that early. In the Garden of Eden, that story. And then in Noah's day, the whole world went bad again. And, and God wanted to start over through Noah. So we, we learn about the fall of man. We learn about our human nature. We learn that man, we, we make mistakes. We do the wrong things. But then something happened towards the middle of, of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. A very pivotal event in Scripture, which is called the Call of Abraham. In that story, this man Abraham is called of God. God has a new plan to offer grace and forgiveness and life to man. And he's going to do it through this man Abraham and his family. And so God calls Abraham and, and says to Abraham, listen Abraham, it is through you and your family that I am going to bless the entire world. Uh, the entire world is going to be blessed, be blessed between you and, and your family. So I'm calling you to go on this long journey to this land where I, where I want your family to live. So we hear about the, the call of Abraham and that the whole world is going to be blessed through his family. Then, as Abraham has Isaac, and Isaac has Jacob, and Jacob has these 12 sons, we learn that through Abraham's family, this nation arises, the nation of Israel. And so the nation of Israel arises, and they go to that promised land, and they establish themselves as a nation. 
And then, the greatest king of Israel, King David, God makes a covenant with him, and God says this to him, I am going to bless the entire world through Israel, but it's going to be through one of your offspring. It is going to be through this coming Messiah. And this coming Messiah is going to be the king of kings. He's going to be a great king. And he's going to establish this eternal kingdom. And so God, through King David, makes this promise that there's going to be this Messiah. Then the rest of the Old Testament we have what's called the